Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Blazing Shop series or the Blazer e-commerce series. I am Patrick and the goal for today is implementing a web API or writing our own controllers and adding these to our Blazing Shop to our e-commerce website. So the goal is to actually add controllers and also add services to the server project. With that, I want to show you a good practice for the web API, like not using fat controllers. This means using controllers only to pass a request through to a service that then does all the work. With fat controllers, they would do all the work. They would have all the logic and we see this already uh, in the example controller the weather forecast controller but it's just an example so this is just fine and uh, well the plan is to also use dependency injection for that and asynchronous calls and maybe even we use a generic response type for the services but I'm not fully prepared so let's just see how far we come one little thing before we start thank you so much to all my supporters for buying me a coffee our club is growing. This means a lot to me in particular because I do need coffee since I'm usually making these videos quite early in the morning. Anyways, if you would like to buy me a coffee as well, please check out the link in the video description below. And apart from that, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and maybe you want to subscribe to my channel. And since I will make a comprehensive online course out of this Blazor e-commerce series, maybe you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter to get early access to that course all right but now let's go to visual studio and create a new controller so we are here i've got a bunch of files open that's just because i wanted to well prepare a little but time's short lately so uh this is again maybe just some kind of freestyle for today but anyways we see uh, the client project here and the server project and here already you see the weather forecast controller so this is actually the web api or one controller of the web api um, you see that we uh, derive from controller base and uh, we have the attributes api controller and route but i will get to that in a second let's just add a new controller for the categories and so we right click and add a new controller and we want to add an API controller. You have a bunch of options here using entity framework and already add some read write actions but I would say we do this with an empty controller and we call this thing category controller like that and there it is already again you see that we uh, derived from controller base that is a base class for an MVC controller without view support and in essence we are using the MVC pattern here the model view controller pattern we have the model for instance the category we have the view this is our blazer web assembly stuff the representation of the categories in the nav menu for instance and then the controller and this is exactly what we are implementing now and you see here as well the API controller attribute that indicates that a type and all derived types are used to serve HTTP API responses and the route specifies an attribute route on a controller. You see one difference here to the weather forecast controller that I do not find now of course because I have so many files open but there it is and here the route is a little bit different um, these brackets with the term controller here just mean that we want to access this thing by the controller name which would be this thing here weather forecast controller and um, here by default they added the API string it's totally up to you when you look through the web you see APIs with that string here or without do whatever you want here I just leave it like that and now we can already add a method now again when we compare this to the to the weather forecast controller then we see that it returns an a list an i enumerable in essence with the weather forecast class here i want to make this a little bit different because i want to return an action result like that and already add the type for that which would be a list of 
categories and we call this get categories like that maybe and add the type here or the using directive for blazing shop shared and why i want to do this that way it's quite simple with that i can return a status code like 200 okay and then return a list of categories here in the future maybe we want to return something like not found for for not found if I don't know a product hasn't been found for instance or a forbidden whatever you can you just have more things you can do here you can return more stuff and um, the default is a 200 okay so in this case um, except when an error happens I guess then something else would be returned like a 500 internal server error but here the default would be a 200 okay and we cannot change that and additionally additionally to that with .NET 5 when you're adding just a web API for instance you uh, create with the terminal and just uh, write .NET new web API so you create a new web API project then what they did with .NET 5 is they added the Swagger UI by default and this means you actually don't need Postman anymore for instance as a test client for your API you can just use Swagger um, but Swagger needs this kind of return type to see uh, what actually is returned by a controller method. Well, long story short, this is the return type to use and I will add an asynchronous uh, return type to that later or let's do it right now. You know what we can do it right now. So let's just add an async and task and now we've got lots of angle brackets here. So this thing now is an asynchronous method. Please ignore the warnings here. I don't know if we will fix this in this episode because this will definitely be fixed when we add entity framework here and the SQL Server Express database. Uh, but for now, of course, it's saying it lacks an await operator. So this thing here is not asynchronous. But anyways, what I want to do is just return the categories and we've got the categories. You know what? Let me close all the other files. And the diff here okay and we got the categories from this category service so let's just return these so in essence we just move them from the client to the service so now jesus is this correct I have a bracket here, okay, new list. Maybe like that, yes, okay, now we can, that's correct. And um, yeah, so we move them from the client actually to the service, and now we have to make a web service call, right? So we do this web service call in the in the, in the here in the category service now i'm confused oh yeah okay so we've got the controller here and now we go back to the client service the client category service and here now i want to make a web service call but to be able to do this i have to inject the http client class and what we can also do is we can make this asynchronous. So load categories would be a method with the return type task now to make this an asynchronous method. Or we need this return type to be able to use this asynchronously. And now back to the service here, we just add task load categories. And then we also make this async and then we leave the categories here but then we need a constructor to again inject the HTTP client class to be able to make an HTTP call or an HTTP request for that we just type CTOR for constructor hit tab twice and then in here we add the HTTP client 
call this HTTP maybe. And with control period, we can add the system.net.http reference. And then as well, we create and assign the field HTTP. And I like to add an underscore to that. Okay, and now the categories will be await HTTP. And now a new method get from JSON async. And we need another using director for that systemnet HTTP JSON. Now this thing needs a type, which would be list of categories because this is what we actually get from the service. And now in here we add the URL or URI of the actual service call, which would be API, and then just the controller name, which is case insensitive. So in our case, it's API category because the category controller, as you can see here, has this route, API controller. And then there's also one more thing we can add, which would be the HTTP request method. In our case, this is definitely get. And by the way, you need this if you want to use Swagger UI. Uh, so Swagger needs to know exactly what um, HTTP request method we got here. The web API itself does not really need to know this in this specific case because we named this method get categories and with this get here this is just a convention and the web api then assumes that this also is a get method with the http method get and we could also add a route either with again the route attribute or you can just make this a little bit shorter and put the routes in brackets we could call this for example get categories um, so the complete URL would then be API forward slash category forward slash get categories. But you wouldn't really do this. So we just leave it like that. And then the route is API category with the method get. Okay, now I talked a lot and now I just have to check if we need to change something else because we are receiving them here, right? Yeah. Okay, let's just test it because I think this won't work. But let's see. So we changed the category service here, injected the HTTP client class, made this asynchronous. Let me just have a look at the divs and we have the controller. Yeah, nothing else has changed. And which is important for me is that we, yeah, we don't see the categories here on the client. Okay. Well, let's close this. And I think this has been reloaded already. You open the blazing shop and you see that we don't see the categories here, right? Although we are making the call and we actually receive them, we don't see them in the nav menu. Well, there is one little and easy fix for that. We have to make this lifecycle method here on initialized asynchronous. And how do we do that? Just make the return type task and use on initialized async and also don't forget the async keyword here and then here we call this asynchronous method with await and now we save this wait until it's built okay again ignore the warning here and now we go back to our website to our shop and there are the categories beautiful now this already works and now the question is do we want to use services yeah I would say we do this we are maybe 50 minutes in we've got some time I guess so let's go back to Visual Studio and now 
again this might be a bit confusing in the beginning because we now have the controller here that has the logic in essence to return the 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 categories but it is a better practice to use services again it kind of is the repository pattern where you say that all CRUD operations should be done by a repository well what we do here is similar to the client actually add a new folder called services uh, services there is already a folder called services this is strange uh, maybe because I did this before let's have a look open folder and file explorer okay there it is there it come on there it is and yeah exactly you see I tested some stuff before so I have to remove something here so that would be it I guess already tested something with entity framework but this should be it now I removed the services folder and now we should be able to create it again and add it to the project automatically so services it is and now we add another folder category service and in here exactly the same as on the client we add an interface and also an implementation class so add a new item i category service there it is make this public and then we also add an implementation class at new item category service there it is okay and now for the interface we just have a look at the controller again we see actually get categories that would be the method and we also add all these return types so to the i category no <laughs> you see now it's getting tricky so we got this method here ah jesus not the action result just leave the action result but this is what we have to return we want to make this asynchronous and use a list of categories to return them and what is going on here uh, of course we have to remove the angle bracket here all right so we've got our methods and we implement the interface here so our category service with control period again we can implement the interface here and in essence again we move the categories one step further so here we return a new list of categories maybe we also just put them here so our categories which would be a list of categories this category and this is a new list like that and here we just return the categories like that and we add the async keyword again please ignore the warning when we add entity framework in the next episode maybe uh, then this will be gone of course we could do something like i don't know task delay zero then the warning would be gone but i guess um, that's that's not really necessary right so 
let's just remove this. Um, why did I use a property now for that? Well, I can already tell you that later when we add the products, we want to have the logic again to get the products by a specific category on the service now. In the last episode, we did everything on the client. We had the whole list of products on the client and just filtered them. But I guess when you've got hundreds or thousands of products, you don't want to load all the products to the client and then the client should filter them by the category. This should be done by the service. So this is why I added them here. And later again, when we add a database, then they will be removed here anyways. And then we filter them with the help of the database. But okay, these are the categories. We have the get categories method. We have our new interface again. And now regarding the controller, we need a constructor to inject the category service. So we add a constructor with CDOR and here we add I category service. Let's call this category service. We add the using directive. Pay attention now, this should be blazing shop server services category service. And we initialize the field here category service, category service. And now we return await category service get categories. And when we run this now, there should be an error. So let's see, where is the shop again? There it is and it is reloading, correct we see that we don't see any categories and it's telling us a 500 internal server error. And let's see if we see this error in Visual Studio. Let's scroll down. Yeah, it's a dependency injection related thing that unable to resolve the service for I category service. Now, what does that mean? We have to register this service in the startup CS file here, similar again to the client. We did this in the program CS, but now regarding the service, we do this in the startup CS, but the code is actually the same. So we just say services add scoped and for the I category service we want to use the category service like that and of course add the using directive. You see now there's the client and the server so pay attention to that. We want to use the server. And this thing is now rebuilding. And in a couple of seconds, we should see our categories. There they are. Okay, so now this thing is complete. I mentioned a generic service response type. Maybe we can just leave this thing now and go to the products. So the next thing we need is a product controller and also a product service. So let's just add a controller first. Add new controller. Again, an API controller, which is empty. And this thing is called product controller. There it is. And now we add the service already. Not a new item. First, we need a new folder which would be the product service. Now we add a new item. It should be an interface, the I product service. Make this public, please. And then also add the implementation class product service. 
Added an interface again. Nice. Okay, let's just make this a class, which is public. And we implement the I product service. Okay, I think that's it. Let me have a look again. Yeah. Okay. Now regarding the I product service, we need a couple of methods actually. We need a method to receive all the products. We need a method to receive products by category. We need a method to receive a single product. So a bunch of stuff actually. But let's start with task list products, which would be get all products. Then we can add the using directive first and then we add task also a list of products which would be get products by category question for me is if you use the category ID or the URL I think this would be the URL actually because currently we're also using the the URL uh, for for the route like slash books slash electronics and with that let's use that to call this method then and the last thing get uh, a single product so this is not a list of products this is just one product get product get single product get product well I think get product is okay and this now would be the product ID so we have get all products, get products by category, and get product. And now, of course, we implement this thing. And again, we move this from the client to the service. So we've got our product service here. And we need the property. And also then we say that this is a new list of products and we just replace this and maybe move this to the bottom. I know it's a property should be on top maybe, but it's so big that I just want to see it at the bottom and don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, so we got our list of products. Again, of course, this will come from the database later or in the next episode. And now this should be simple, right? We uh, have the method to get our products. And in this case, we just return our products that and we make this thing async and we can actually add this keyword to the other methods as well and now let's finish up this implementation here and then move to the get products by category and then get the single products because this thing here can be tricky and here you will see why it also makes sense to use services in this case because I want to add a method in the category service to get a category service by the category URL. And in this case, I have the ID. And then with the help of the ID, I can return the correct products. But we will get to that first, get all products here. So we're done with the service for now. And now we go to the controller. Again, we need a constructor. We inject the product service. And that's the one. Initialize the field. Add our underscore. And now we add a new method public async task action result with a list of products. Get all products. 
and this thing just returns an OK with await product service get all products. We add the type and that should be it. Okay. So we injected our product service, we have our constructor and we have the get all products method here. And of course we have to register this thing again. So down here, we just copy and paste this and use the product service instead of the category service. And also add the, now it's suggesting the client first. So pay attention to that. Save everything and rebuild this. Okay, I hope I haven't, I didn't forget anything. Uh, let's see. Is this the latest entry? Yeah. Okay, we got some warnings now. That's fine by me. And now we see our products. Let's have a look at the network tab. I'm not sure about that. Oh yeah, of course we have to change the client now. Um, this is what I totally forgot. So in the product service here now, here we're making the call. Okay, great. And let's just remove the products here. Like that and uh, add a constructor again, of course. So totally forget, forgot that. So we, oh, that's okay. We inject here now the um, HTTP client again. Call this HTTP. Initialize the fields again and again. And now down here, this is a task similar to the category service now. Let's see, right, load categories. And this is the client implementation. So we could actually really just copy this and say the products are now see at the task return type if I'm too fast tell me in the comments please and now we replace this by product and the URL will also be product and we add the async keyword and now one more using directive Oh, come on. Visual Studio freezing now? Okay. Jesus. I just thought that Visual Studio crashed, but it didn't. Okay, so we got all our products here. Nice. And now let's see. We get an error. No, we don't. Let's go back to our app. And what is happening here? Well, you see now that we don't see any products, but we are actually receiving them from the client. So let's have a look again. Maybe we have to make some more changes to the client. Okay, let's have a look. So we see the index here. And in here we see that we try to get the correct category. Does this work actually? Electronics, books, and video games. Okay. This is interesting because we, when we refresh this, we don't see the products. That's what I was expecting. Now, again, it's getting tricky because we have the web service calls, of course, and this should happen asynchronously and the thing now is, the situation is that the client 
does not always wait for the for all our items for the categories and the products to be returned by the service you've already seen this with the categories and we had to make this asynchronous and await the result and i think it's similar now to the products it's not the index but i think the end result will be that we get the products from the or try to get them uh, on the index page on the index razor page and don't do this on the product list anymore and also remove the category id here so that we will only have a list of, of products and the index razor will already filter this by the category if we want to filter this by the category okay but first let's go to the product list so the product list razor file here we see this and this is similar to the categories that this is not awaited this is not an asynchronous method i think when we turn this into one and await this call here and we already did this we changed that to the task return type um, this could already be the fix for our current situation yeah that's it this is not working okay great so we've got the categories we've got the products now the next step is to filter by the category URL because when we go here that was Alexa <laughs> interesting Alexa has no answer to that so Alexa can't help us here Jesus I should stop saying Alexa but she was activated nice Ich bin mir leider nicht sicher. Great. Alexa, mach den Bildschirm aus. Okay, I just told her to to shut off the, the screen because it's an Alexa show. Jesus Christ, I'm making, I'm making commercials for, for the Echo now. Um, yeah, this is my new my new little toy here, the Echo Show 5. But anyways, we wanted to, to add a category URL. Amazon is always listening. Jesus Christ. Um, well, we are making an, a shop here, right? So actually, this this is a competition here for Amazon. Yeah, not really. So what do I want to do? We are going here to the shop and we want to filter by the URL now, by the category URL. And uh, looking at the category service here, we are receiving all the categories and well first thing would be to get the category actually by the category service or from the category service uh, but let's uh, look I have to focus again we load the products here and uh, no actually we can add a method here we have the method already but we want to add the uh, the route for this thing actually let's make this an HTTP get call specifically ah what am I doing I want to look at the controller here exactly this is HTTP get and uh, now we can add another method to get a product by the category get products by category and we add the category URL and now we need a new route here so HTTP get and category URL and this has to be done in curly braces because this is a parameter and here we now say get products by category and add the category URL. Okay. And with that, let's implement this. Just to test, I want to return 
hard-coded the products with a certain ID, so products where the product uh, uh, the product category ID is one maybe. Okay, and turn this into a list. All right. So this would be the service and in the controller now we save this as well and now back to the client is it the product now nah, it's the load products method yeah we can actually change this I think go to implementation and here now we can also add a category URL actually so let's say we have the category URL here which is null by default and we go to the interface and edit here as well category URL which is null and now here we change the string a little bit add a slash and then add the category URL and we save everything with control K and control S and is it rebuilding I don't know what I, why I'm always not all because I'm saving every little change maybe back to the shop we see all our products and we see them all see them although I'm at the books section I think I forgot something here This is not correct. Back to the product. Yeah, this is definitely not correct. But why did they filter them? Ah, because of this thing here, of course. So we have to actually remove this because the, the goal was to just get the products and they should already be filtered by the service. So we are on the uninitialized async. Ah, this wouldn't work. So we have to make the change already to the index the razor file actually. Okay, so let's just do this. We inject the i product service now. And I hope this makes sense when I'm when I'm done here. On parameter set we get the category URL, right? So what we can already do is we can call the product service load products with the category URL like that because the category URL is provided by our page directive or let's say by the well by the address the user has entered then we go to the to the method to the implementation and we make this call either the category URL is null or it's not and then uh, we send the category URL to the service and the products then will be loaded and then in the product list itself we actually don't want to load the products and we actually don't need the actually I think we don't need any of this anymore oh no we we do we do need them not everything but some of the codes and then here we just say product service products that's correct I think okay um, we've got our uninitialized no logic in there for now but the important change here is that we want just the products 
not filter them here on the client and we uh, we removed in essence the category ID uh, which can't be used now here by the index razor we just add the product list here and we still leave the category name and that's why we need to make the change here or make the let the code here um, because we need the name okay long story short let's test this now the index is loading the products and we I think we have to add some some code to make this actually work this real building and again I have to scroll all the way down but this should already be loaded okay this is what I was expecting actually when we go to the home page we make the call the correct one and we see the products here when we go to books we make the right call as well but we see all the products so that's not correct actually and I don't know why it's showing us all the products here but the thing is when we reload we shouldn't see them that's correct as well and now we only see the books interesting interesting okay as I told you I'm not fully prepared so this could also be a live stream in essence and we are already almost 15 minutes in okay I hope you're still with me if so thank you very much really appreciate that and I hope you're still learning something okay so now we've got the product list and I think in the index now we are doing this okay one thing of course that we can do is make this asynchronous again on parameters set async and also await this call problem is that the product list is trying to get the products I think before the products are loaded but let's just see page is rebuilding I hope yep and reloading blazing shop electronics uh, not really working but now we get all the products here at least go to books this is working this is really interesting electronics not working ah Jesus Christ <laughs> I hard-coded the category so actually this is now working but it is not working when we okay in the uh, category it is working but I think when we navigate to the home page it is working but when we reload the complete page it's not working okay and this is what I was actually expecting because the problem is that that the index is loading the products and the product list is trying to access the products from the product service in this case here before they are actually loaded if you would do it here if you would load the products here in the product list component it would work again but I want to do it that way I want to have this logic in the index razor so this is the only place where the products will be loaded maybe if you change the application later we have to change this as well but in this case I only want to load all the products in the index razor because also here and this is the main reason for that I get the category URL now of course what we could do is and you see there are a couple of ways to do this uh, we could just add the category URL as parameter actually that's not a bad idea let me think about that if you use the category URL here as parameter then we could use this thing to load here and then we wouldn't have to use an event because actually I wanted to show you how to to use event callbacks to uh, load the products but maybe we don't really need this 
Would you like to see that? So sad this is not a live stream. Um, so I was just jumping to that moment here because I tried this and it didn't work. So um, we're doing this with event callbacks as I have planned. And to make this work now, again, we have removed the, the uh, category ID here. But what's really important now is that in the product service, we add an event. And then we are telling our product list component that it should re-render when this event is invoked. So if you have a look now again, we can reload the page. We actually make the call to get the categories, but I forgot to add the call to get the products again. So await product service. Oh, load products with the category URL. And we are making this asynchronous again. Async task. Async. And now at least we should get the correct products. Okay, there they are. We see all the products here. Uh, we're getting the books, electronics. Of course, I have hard coded this. So you're getting the books every single time. But now when I reload this, then we are actually receiving the products from the service. But, and here it works, but at the home page, it doesn't. And what we, can, what we can do here to fix this is using an event callback. Okay, and for that, we go to the I product service on the client. Where is it? So look, I product service. This is the correct one. And here we add event action on change and now in the implementation class of course is this the correct one yes it is we implement this event and when we receive the products we now just say on change invoke and now back to the product list we implement the i disposable interface i disposable and now here on initialized async which could be also synchronous i think we can just say product service on change and then we subscribe to that event and call state has changed. And this, as you can see here, notifies the component that its state has changed. And when applicable, this will cause the component to be re-rendered. And I hope now that when this event is raised or invoked, the unchanged event, that then we will see our products. But we also have to implement the dispose method to unsubscribe. So dispose, that's the one. And then we say product service on change minus equal state has changed. And as I was already thinking that we can change this and make this not asynchronous anymore. All right, let's see. The app is rebuilding. We got some warnings. That's okay. That's fine. And here's our application. And we see finally our products. So now I can reload 
uh, the event is invoked and then we see all our products. All right, and now let's get the proper product actually by the correct category. And we also have to change this thing here. I think, no, oh, this is working. Maybe because we made it asynchronous now. Okay, nice. All right, so let's go back to the services. Let's have a look in the Solution Explorer, Category Controller. No, we need the Category Service because I want to get a category, Task Category, and I want to get a category by the URL. Get Category by URL, and of course we add the string category URL. Now back to the implementation. Implement this. And here we simply return asynchronous as always categories first or default where the Category It's called URL to lower equals category URL to lower to Jesus Christ to lower. Okay, so this is the method. And now you see again that this makes sense now with the services because here now we can add a constructor and we need one anyways when we add the database uh, to access the data context. But this is for the next episode because we are really, really, again, this episode is really long. Uh, but anyways, we add the category service here. I category service category service it's the server one we initialize the fields and now we first get the category Wait, category service get category by URL, which would be the category URL. And then we say we want the categories by the category ID. Okay. Should be it already, I guess, because we're making the call already. So let's have a look. Is it already done? Books. Yay! This works. A success moment. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we did a lot now. We get all the products from the service. We get them by category. The only thing left now is to get a single product from the service. Now how would we do that? Of course first we have to implement the method. So here's the get products int id and we just return well let me first get the product with products first or default where the product id equals the given id then we just return the product and maybe you already see that there's a lot of potential for errors because maybe the ID is wrong, maybe the category URL is wrong and we don't get a category ID. So in this case we could return or errors will happen so we can well use try catch blocks here or uh, what we could also do is uh, use a generic service response but I think we do this next time. 
and um, just leave it at that. And uh, when we then add a service response with a message or something, uh, we could also return a not found maybe. Lots of possibilities here. But anyways, I just wanted to receive a single product here. Now this is the service method. So now we have to go to the controller again and add another method, of course. Public async task action result with a single product now. Get product with, ah, oh, Jesus, not the route. I was already at the route, integer id and we return okay await product service get products with this id here please don't crash okay and we add a new route http get and now this is interesting because the route is actually the same as the one for the category URL. So we could do it like that. It's an integer, but mm, I don't think this works. If you want to try this, we can try this. So let me just use this URL here and the method get product with the ID. Again, the routes would be similar, API, controller, and then category URL and ID, but this is just a text. So let's see. Let's just use this one. And now for the product service on the client, we need a new method to get a single product. So task get products with an ID. And let's save this, implement the interface. And here now we say, again, it's asynchronous, that our product, or we just return the product maybe. Uh, let me think about that again. <laughs> uh, task product, yeah, let's do it like that. We return the product. And it's the ID now. Like that. And we return just one product this time. API products. ID. Correct, hope so. And the interface as well. And now we got the product details component where we want to actually receive the products. One thing I can add here is we can add a route constraint because I told you that this has to be a string. This can, of course, also be an integer. You just have to tell this thing that this is an integer. And now we can say that the product, after we made this asynchronous, async on an S on initialized async, um, this is not necessary, I think. And the product now is wage product service get product with the ID. Okay, let's test this. This building, the usual warnings, no error so far. Oh no, there was an error. Yeah. This is what I was expecting. So we have the same URL actually, but uh, the the web service, the web API doesn't know, okay, do you want to call the get products by category or do you want to call the get product method? 
So what we can do here is of course change the URL in our product service or rather the controller product controller so here we have the get uh, the category URL and we can add something like I don't know get products product get products or maybe change it because I think that the style guide or the guide is to usually add the ID after the after the controller name for a single object, a single entity. Don't add an ID for all entities. And this is something special actually. So we add category here and also add this string to the product service call this ah no 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 <laughs> now this is not working of course because then we see that all the time so we have to add an if condition here if the category url is indeed null then we call this method here if not we call this thing add the category and now we don't need the URL here category category correct this we can remove format this thing so if the category URL is null we call our standard API product URL then if it is not null we call product category and then the category URL and now for a single product we call API product and then the ID that's how it should be and we have where is the controller again there it is not saved now it is saved and here we see the routes for the category all right Let's scroll down again. Now it started, no error for now. Let's reload this. Ah, it's taking pretty long. I don't know if this is actually working. Well, we don't see any errors here. Maybe we have to rebuild it manually. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, so far so good. We see all our product products. Let's reload this again to see the cards. We get the categories, we get the products. We get the correct products for this for the categories and this is not working. Why is this not working? We see object reference not set to an instance of an object. So let's go to the product details razor. Our product is null and here we see product wait so maybe we can simply make this a new product and now we should get all this stuff here of course we could also add a loading screen but let's see save this now and it's rebuilding Reloading doesn't really work, so maybe we have to do this again. Okay, we open the console again. We've got all our products, got the categories, and now we've got the single product. Jesus, and what if you really reload? 
It works. Jesus Christ. This was hard. <laughs> but then again, it's maybe one and a half hour, maybe one hour because I skipped a little bit in the video. Um, but I think we got it. Okay, I'm a bit confused by the handling of Visual Studio, I've got to say, because sometimes it's showing me that there are big, big errors and you're kind of doubting your skills a little bit or your knowledge. But uh, it seems that uh, this was just an issue with Visual Studio. Like telling me that anything is like a sign is missing or something. Or that it does not rebuild the, the page itself. By the way, using the play button here doesn't work every time as well. Oh dear. But yeah, that was a lot, I think. I hope you learned something and you are not totally confused. Please tell me in the comment section how you think this episode was and if I have to change something, maybe prepare more. Again, this was similar to a live stream for me, actually, uh, because I haven't prepared a lot of code. But anyways, I think it works now and I will commit this, of course, to GitHub and... Please, 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 feedback in the comments. This would really help. And uh, again, suggestions. Anything you want to see me do here in this Blazor e-commerce series. And uh, I would say that's it for now. Thanks again to all my supporters. Maybe you want to see your name here as well. Even after that episode, then feel free to check out the link below to buy me a coffee sometime. And don't forget to like and subscribe and also consider subscribing to my newsletter for early access to my upcoming online courses. And for the e-commerce course, I can really promise that this won't be that confusing. It won't be more structured and you will see a clean line how you do all the things. And one last thing while I'm already at it, feel free to have a look at my Blazor WebAssembly full stack bootcamp if you already want to dive deeper into Blazor WebAssembly. We're building a classic online browser game there from scratch with armies fighting each other, JSON web token authentication for user registrations, and we store everything in a SQLite database. There's also a two hour preview available here on YouTube. So maybe you want to check this one out first. All right, again, please, I need some feedback. And um, for today, I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching again, and I see you next time. Take care.